A very good evening to all of you. Welcome to yet another Zoom call organized by Jungle Bells. Jungle Bells is an exclusive women's wildlife group. We are into wildlife related activities, conservation and wildlife tours. Before we begin, I would like to request all of you to turn your cameras off and switch off your microphones. If you have any questions for the guests, please type them in the chat box and we will address them after their talk. Also, if you want to receive further communication from us about our events, please type in your email addresses and phone numbers in the chat box. Uh, so to introduce, uh, I mean, we have two very elegant ladies today on our forum and at Jungle Bells, we always believe that, you know, uh, we are promoting what um, other women in wildlife do and they're doing their level best or they're pursuing wildlife in any form. So we are very proud today that both of them are achievers in their own field. Uh, we have Richa Kedia uh, and Kriti Valia uh, today with us and uh, we'll be able hi. to listen. Hi. 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 So hello. So we'll be able to listen to their uh, amazing journey uh, in some time. So uh, without further ado, I think let's move on. Uh, I just would like to introduce uh, Richa first. So Richa is a chemical engineer by qualification, but her passion for art and nature made her quit her job and become a wildlife illustrator. She has been freelancing since 2017 and has executed several illustration, illustration projects for reputed brands like WWF India, Traffic India, WII Gujarat, Andhra, Orissa, and, Asa, and Assam Forest Departments, AIIMS, Welcome Trust, IITD, Pagdandi Safaris, etc. In wildlife and nature, particularly birds are her favorite muse. She spends a lot of time gardening, birding, observing wildlife, and rearing butterflies. She also conducts art workshops for all age groups to rekindle their bond with nature, ignite their curiosity, and enhance their observation skills. Uh, welcome, Richa, on our platform. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, um, since when have you been, you know, interested in wildlife illustrating? It's so different. We've heard like wildlife photography. Uh, we we've heard wildlife speakers. They're into awareness conservation. But I had never heard of someone who does so, you know, illust does illustrations and takes takes it as her career or profession or passion. So honestly, before I began, uh, sorry, I became a wildlife illustrator. I did not know of anyone who was one. So as in, yeah, like. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, so art was always a passion. Uh, so I've, I've been an introvert kid. So I always loved art. I always loved nature. But uh, I mean, yeah, so as in, I did not think that I'll merge the two and, and uh, that will become my profession. But yes, as in, I've so spent my time normally, I would go uh, growing up in Delhi, whatever art uh, or nature that I could find around. We go for treks and hikes in Aravli's in Himalaya. And I would love collecting all these leaf samples, the flowers that we get. And I'll, generally I'll come back and I'll paint those. And uh, yeah, so as in, so that's what like both of, uh, both art and nature have always been a passion. But uh, yes, I, I, I mean, uh, the combining the two just somehow happened along the way. All right, that, that's really... That's so very different, but uh, good. But how did you, like you said right now, but how did you actually de develop an interest in it? You know, you would want to pursue it. Or how did you think that way? Uh, so that's what, as I said, like, uh, till I became one, I did not know that I was going to become one. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I mean, as, as I said, I always had a passion for both art and nature. Uh, yeah. I worked in the corporate world for, uh, I mean, uh, almost a decade. And uh, there and all the time, like the weekends and whatever free time I get, yeah. it was either the wild, like I would go hiking in the wild or, or uh, you know, uh, birding somewhere or something of the sort. Or I'll be, you know, in my uh, room with my sketchbook and I'll be sketching and stuff. So, uh, so I wanted to actually quit and pursue art full time. I uh, 
did not know I'll be doing wildlife also full time. But then, uh, yeah, as in, I think initially when I started, uh, I was doing a mix projects, like whatever project came my way. Uh, fortunately, I think the wildlife project happened like almost my first second project which I got was a wildlife project which I okay. worked with Pagdandi Safaris that's a lodge in uh, MP yes, and I got I a know. project there to make their wildlife maps and uh, illustrate some birds for their lodges so okay. that was almost the second project I got and I think increasingly so the more I do wildlife I don't want to do anything else so like I think <laughs> now 100% I'm doing wildlife only so oh, people ask me that why only wildlife why not anything else but then I like yeah I don't think I can do anything else right now because uh, exactly. earlier I did I did used to paint uh, you know other things like as in as humans or or uh, uh, stories or other forms uh, but I think now increasingly so I don't want to paint anything else other than wildlife so yes wonderful so, wonderful yeah uh, so are you a self taught illustrator or uh, do you have any mentor in this field or have you taken a formal training per se for uh, illustration so I am largely self-taught, like as in, uh, I've not taken a, exactly a formal training, but yes, essentially I've had many teachers. So Ashwini Prithvivasi in Delhi, uh, uh, he has taught me a lot of art, like in different mediums, how to deal with that. I've had, uh, like even my school art teachers had a role to play because they also taught me a lot. So Prithpal ma'am in Mount Carmel, uh, she taught me a lot in, in school itself. And okay. uh, yeah, I mean, there on also like for a, like a lot of things that I've learned from different people, and and of course, as in with art, the learning is continuous along the way. So absolutely, as in, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I, so as in, so there are obviously a lot of people I look up to in in uh, the wildlife field or the wildlife illustrating field, also as you say. So in India. Uh, Rohan Chakradri is one. Uh, Nirupa Rao is a botanical artist. I love both their okay. works, and I keep uh, following them for uh, you know uh, inspiration and uh, yeah, yeah, like as in uh, hope to get there someday. And outside India, so there is uh, John Audubon work which I liked a lot. Like he's uh, the the guy who painted uh, the birds of America, and I love all yeah. the birds he painted. So uh, there's John Gold who painted the Indian birds. I love those birds also, bird paintings. So as in, I, yeah, I think I have a lot of those uh, people that I follow, okay. whose books I follow and I love their work. So yes, as in, they give me inspiration to keep making more works. Wonderful, wonderful. That's so nice. Uh, so for this, are you required to travel a lot? Uh, and uh, what are the few of the challenges? We know traveling and a woman nowadays it's become much more you know not as you know difficult as earlier but yeah. how is the kind of travel that you do I mean you purposely make these uh, plan these kind of travels or you just go with the flow and wherever you feel uh, you want to so uh, yeah so as in uh, you know like I do travel or I actually want to travel for my works because uh, so the the thing is that when you see and make something is very different than you make something only by picture because you know your a photograph right. uh, is is 2D uh, so if I'm making something just from a photograph and I think I encourage most of my students also that actually go and try making something from 3D so increasingly now I actually travel around and I travel with a like I have a journal like a you know a notebook a sketchbook which I carry which a field journal is and I like I have those field uh, sketches which I'll make so the, those are not like okay. very elaborate sketches but like you know uh, say typically like depends upon the time I have on the field because that's always you know limited by time by sunlight etc so the time mm -hmm. I have on field I'll make those quick sketches on whatever I see along the way and of course I'll take pictures and uh, probably if yeah. I can like a leaf or a flower, I pick also on, on and and you know come back and paint. But I yeah. do ensure that I make those field sketches because the field sketches tells a lot because it tells a lot about the environment, especially like if I'm painting okay. a bird. So then it's not only the bird in question, uh, what it is doing, uh, like it's jumping, is how it like you know the the uh, the behavior is very important, increasingly so, and also the habitat overall, like you know what what uh, grass was it in, what fruit it was eating, what uh, tree it was jumping on, uh, if it's nesting, which so all those details, uh, which. I mean, photograph uh, can capture, but then it'll be too much of in photographs. And I, I mean, for me, like I'm not a very technical, technologically savvy person, so I can't really hunt right. down 
photographs uh, very easily. I have those field notes. So as in all these information, I'll note down in my field notes. If I have any question, that so that goes in all, all my field notes. And that's what when I come back and I paint, uh, the field notes are very essential for me. Right. And right. so that'll combine with the pictures and you know I, that end results in the final work, uh, artwork which I'm there. And I think that brings in more life to the artwork than if I was doing it only you know on based on a photograph or uh, yeah like uh, not. Right. Not not based on a personal experience. So uh, so yes, as in I do travel. Uh, uh, now in I mean so travel has its challenges as you mentioned. Yes, as in as a woman, you have to consider the safety angle first uh, because most of these places the safety is always a concern. Uh, then then you also has the cost angle because uh, the tiger safaris are exp extremely expensive and of course ask in, me <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah I know yeah. and as a freelancer I'm always on a tight budget like you know as in in a corporate job I had more uh, money Absolutely. to yeah. spare but mm -hmm. of course as, in, as a freelancer I'm always on a you know a tight budget that and right. you know, I mean if you're going on a safari you have to do at least four or five safaris and normally I would actually want to do it alone because I want to stop at places and sketch also so that is another yeah. issue that yeah. most people would not be willing to you know stop and let me sketch and stuff like that so so yeah so those are the challenges which I face in the field fortunately for me like increasingly so I think most of my uh, projects take me to places so many of my travel is related to the projects only so the my clients are willing to sponsor my trips so that takes care of <laughs> yeah that the is clients. the easier way I mean yeah exactly so when that happens I love my job even more uh, increasingly yeah. so and yeah, uh, yeah. So, but yeah, as in, of course, as in, uh, like, if I spend a week in the field, I think I have to spend two weeks back in my studio, you know, working on the commission and then finishing the piece. But then I think it's always worth it. So, so yeah, so travel is, Correct. of course, is, is, is very essential. Right, right. Amazing. So, um, I don't know if you know this. I have not told you when we had a couple of interactions that uh, I had seen uh, your work, which Janie had put it up on her um, uh, Instagram once that she had visited, okay. I think you are this thing. And I happened to just check Jenny's profile because I follow her and she's just amazing. And that's how when I, I saw this and I thought, whoa, this is something so very different that you're doing. I mean, it's not like, you know, the normal <laughs> wildlife so photography. Much. So that's how I got in touch. And I was really impressed by the illustrations and, you know, things that you've done. I mean, I think I urge everyone who've joined here or on Facebook to visit Richard's profile because they I'm going to show you a few things but equally her uh, uh, their, the work is really exemplary it's very nice I mean I would certainly like to mention that so uh, I'll just move on to a few of your this thing um, yeah so if you want me to stop anywhere you I think the full screen is not visible. It's only half. Oh, one minute. Is it visible now? Uh, now I think. Yes. I can... Yes. Yeah. 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 So these are different projects which I have carried on for different things. So I think each one has a story behind. Uh, so so yeah, so this is like the project which I'm doing with WWF on the left hand side, which is the vultures. Uh, so I'm actually doing a project with them on all the raptors. So owls and vultures and eagles have done. Uh, right now I'm working on the falcons bit, but then that's what that it is to illustrate all the species of uh, raptors wow. in the country. And it's a very interesting project because uh, as in I learn along the way, uh, I think with each project, my learning increases. And I, I, I did not know that we have so many species of raptors. So like we have nine species of vultures, 36 species of owls. So as in owls is just insane, the variety we have, uh, the, the diver diversity we have, sorry uh and yeah and each one is is unique in itself so Wonderful. the other one Nadjur uh, illustration that you see so this is actually uh i had visited koringa uh that is a mangrove uh sanctuary in andhra pradesh so i did okay. a lot of work for koringa there and uh it inspired me because uh, the whole uh, mangrove ecosystem is so interesting and uh, you know like mangroves itself is actually surviving on so little like it's actually on you know in in a, in, uh, in that uh, place where no other life 
form could survive. Yeah. Correct. Saline water, it is no soil whatsoever, practically, and it protects the coastline from any storms which are coming in. And also, like because mangroves is occupy this niche which no one else will spread on, it has so many organisms which depend upon mangroves. So you know, you fish right. and catch, have these uh, olive ridley turtles. Uh, then you know so on and so forth that you have so many organ like crabs there's so many varieties of crabs which live only in the mangroves so that's right. what like inspired me to do uh, this illustration and the the sad part is that we're losing the mangroves is what you know like that's where the whole time piece is there that we're losing time right. to save the mangroves and these species and also ourselves because i think if we lose the mangroves uh, we are the the way climate change and the storms are increasing we like we'll wash Correct. away the shores completely like Correct, correct. So, yeah. so it's actually a race of against time that what we time, do. Time, yeah. One minute. I guess there is some. I'll share it again. <laughs> huh. Yeah. There we are. So this is a poster I did on bats again, very close to me because this is on the time of COVID. I created this one uh, when people were burning bats all over the world, just blaming them for the outbreak of the disease. Whereas, as in, I think it was more humans than bats who have done anything because yes. bats are actually uh, they play a very important role ecologically. They do play. Sorry to yeah. interrupt you, Richa. We have uh, in Pune, uh, we have these a lot of constructions coming up and there's a bat colony near my house okay. uh, where they have destroyed the entire colony to bring up the buildings and oh. that was so sad because there was you know actually there were thousands of bats there living for years together yeah and yes. now they've suddenly you know they've driven them away i mean i can't blame them also those people who are going to construct but equally this is a sad part that people do not understand the importance and what that species you know holds in the total ecology ecosystem. yeah ecosystem yeah, what you say? exactly so no so uh, it was sad uh, during home uh, like covid thing they were like just burning these bats colonies which were yeah, like absolutely i mean for Correct. no rhyme or reason they like as in okay one uh, if if the bat was the carrier of the disease it's not that they were actually responsible right. and burning yeah. bats was not going to cause any you know whatever like uh I mean, it, any respite, but yes, as it, I don't know, it was just a reaction. So that's what like this poster came out, and hopefully, it did spread uh, uh, across the world somewhere. Lovely. Well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you are. Yeah, so this was again an antibiotic resistance game. This was more fun. Like, I actually played around yeah. with the owl uh, thing. So this is just uh, like, yeah, so for kids, something which is uh, more right. beautiful. Right. Yeah, this was a book on oh, butterflies nice. again, like on a more playful note for kids, just to explain them about butterflies and the role again they play on the ecosystem and how ecosystem we're hitting yeah. them with the pesticides and pollution and stuff that we're using. So yes, as in increasingly the insects are disappearing. Uh, right. right. That's not yeah. good. Okay. So yeah, this is a brochure I did for Kuringa, but uh, Kuringa Sanctuary. Okay. Yeah, again the then the poster on uh, this is a fishing cat poster. Okay. So fish, okay. fishing cats are also very interesting and uh, like again uh, rarer. So all these uh, smaller cats are rarer to see than the tiger. So of course the whole right. this is around the tiger. But I think yeah, when I go to the field and if I see see any of these uh, smaller cats, I'm happier because they're like a rarer. <laughs> and, rarer yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, so fishing cat, we actually had to take a night safari with the forest department to for, for and we literally were, uh, you know, roaming around the mangroves uh, from, you know, one uh, place to another to spot fishing cat. Finally, we did. Uh, we spotted three and live in action and they're fantastic creatures. The way they, they actually fish is amazing. Like it's a sight to behold type. So, so yeah, so this was the whole poster on them because again, fishing cats also we are losing at a very fast pace and uh, habitat loss as well as they killed because they uh, compete with the fishermen for fish. So Right, right, right. So very interesting thing is we always think about uh like you said big cats like a tiger leopard you know going on it so people are fascinated by them but they are yeah they are 
they should also know by there's so many other uh, you know creatures and animals who are equally interesting they are also going extinct and the awareness about them needs to go up other than you know just a, of course there is a safe tiger but there are other safe also you know that right. needs to be brought up so the awareness needs to come up a lot anyways right so actually that's where my role comes in that like as in you have to spread awareness about all the species especially the lesser known ones so that's what i think i'm right. focused on the lesser known ones than the <laughs> more known ones yeah so it's the mangrove okay yeah so these so are wonderful the i i love mangrove so this is like the plantation which is like a plantation also that you can't just plant a seed of mangrove in the ground and expect them to grow so there's right. this whole technique wherein you actually have to ensure so not only fresh water but also salt water has to be mixed in the right proportion to get the right, mangrove right. plantation and so this is a fish bone technique which is used to like now they have mastered this technique to actually ensure that uh, the you know the inundation happens in a certain way which is required for their growth because it's not easy to grow them so right. plant them sorry so it's a different challenge altogether and the adaptations of course of mangroves are very very fascinating how they actually survive the salinity is amazing right oh this is a huge one plastic kills i mean it's like a <laughs> yeah so this is the uh, oceans may plastic is everywhere so this is like a yeah nuisance right. you know right. yeah oh, so wow. these maps i keep creating so this again uh, the moth poster was in in a fun way that just to again spread oh, awareness right. about moths because moths are believed to be dull colored uh, not pretty and you know like all those mm. myths are uh, and uh, uh, like uh, nocturnal but there are some moths which are very pretty very attractive and also diurnal so this is all myths basically because uh, there's a very little difference between butterflies and moths as actually right. so so it's 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 mostly the the same thing only like only taxonomists or uh, can you know differentiate between okay. the two so nice so, yeah, plastic again yeah yeah so see these butterflies i ha i re read like six species of butterflies in my garden so i then illustrated oh. them also during the covid time so then uh, yeah as in i had more time on my hand so that's what yeah. i did so just before you know last webinar we had a person called ankur patwardhan who has okay. uh, done a phd in butterflies so it was okay. so interesting for me to also get that information because we just see them you know fluttering around but we don't know yeah. what why don't we see them any more much in numbers as we used to see why why yeah. they're not stable so all these questions you know even i had and it was so wonderful to see that apart from the colorful things that they are but they have they, they also play such, such an important role if the butterfly is a going less role yeah like yeah. and uh, also yeah when you raise them as in as in we've read that they are at the bottom of the food chain you know like there are so many predators absolutely yes But yeah, when I raised them, I was actually like, okay, no matter what I do, they just disappear. Like someone or the other eats them. So every day I was like depressed that I watch them progress. I'll actually know, but you know, I'll just get the caterpillar every day. Like I'll, I'll yeah. like watch over them like a hawk that they uh, sketch their progress. That आज वो इतना बड़ा था, इतना बड़ा है. Then suddenly they one day they they just disappear, and I'll be so depressed that you know where the hell did they go and stuff. Like Yeah, and I know. Every day I was actually we would be obsessed at how to save their lives and everything, and then uh, yeah, I think Absolutely. finally, uh, I did manage to raise a few like who reached the final completion stage, and it was actually uh, one one was actually it just emerged out of the pupa, and then it was drying its wings, and उस समय अ पीको केम एंड एट इट आई वाज ओह आई गॉड आई वाज लाइक ब्रोकन कंपलीटली यस रेसिंग देम इट इज लाइक सीरियसली इट्स सो पेनफुल एंड एंड दिस वाज ड्यूरिंग द कोविड टाइम एंड यू नो ऑल अराउंड यू हैव नेगेटिव न्यूज़ फ्लोइंग इन and then Absolutely. i'm focusing on these guys who i can't really save so then uh, yeah it was for me added <laughs> mental pressure so not the best thing <laughs> then yes I, i mean at least i learned a lot from the yeah. whole experience that's nice right. oh yeah and yeah yeah i think that's about it so that's it yeah that's great i mean this is this was so 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 wonderful to see all these so more of her work is available on her instagram page and all of you should i would urge for everyone to go and see and there's a lot of workshops she does right now she's doing in delhi but i'm sure she'll come down 
to Pune and <laughs> Mumbai <laughs> for more of them, for us to also learn from you. So, uh, one important question. There are a lot of women who have logged in through Facebook. There are some are here or some who will watch later the episode. What is yeah. the kind of message you would give them? Because a lot of them are coming into wildlife or maybe they're pursuing their own passion. So I'm not just sticking to wildlife, but this was right. your passion and that's how you brought it on another level. So yeah. how would you, what is the kind of thing you would want to tell them? I would say, yes, this is the correct time that you should be passionate about wildlife because the, the pace at which we are losing wildlife is extremely uh, sad. Uh, but also we need like more and yeah. more people, I think, to create awareness about that also because, uh, I mean, uh, I, I mean, hopefully we don't lose all the species very soon because we are we are literally in a very beautiful country. We have such, such amazing biodiversity that it's crazy and we've managed to preserve it for so many centuries, uh, you know, of habitat habitation or civilization that it's insane so losing it now i mean but the pace we are losing it is is crazy so that's yes we need more and more people so who, all of you who are listening and who would be listening i would actually actively uh, ask you to get involved and be you know involved in wildlife as much as possible and i think the you know our bond with nature is a very innate part of humans because we were a part of nature we, we were cavemen initially to begin with of course, you know, with civilization and all this urbanization, we moved away from that. But I think when we spend time in nature, there's a part of us which connects back, which where, where, where you know, which brings peace to us, which you can't get from anything else. Like as in, that's what I feel that for me, nature and art both are very therapeutic. They're very meditative. So that is the only form of meditation or therapy that I know of and and I require. And I would actually actively uh, encourage everyone to spend more time in nature and you realize that there's a healing which happens, which is, I mean, it's it's just, you can't explain. It's just so uh, natural. So it's like, you just feel at home there. I so much agree to this. I myself, those time in the forest, four, five hours on a safari or maybe a three, four hours, sorry, three, four days away from the uh, normal life brings so much you feel like staying there itself. Yeah, you know, no, so for me, it's like, if, even if I can't spend like that much time, like today I was in Sultanpur, uh, close to yeah. Gurgaon. So there's a, a bird sanctuary there. That itself is so peaceful. Like as in now I'm in a different mind set, mind zone than I was yesterday, you know, like, so yesterday, just, yeah. I mean, so it depends upon, of course, like everyone has, you know, the press for time. There is so much else driving us around. So I would not say that everyone probably has the same luxury for time or whatever. But I think even if you go spend mana in a forest or even in like in a green space, I think that that does a lot to you, I think. And everyone should do that. Like find at least... I don't know, mother, whatever time you can, probably even if it's like one hour per week, uh, just go there, just relax, just spend time, hug a tree, you know, right. just just yeah, smell, like just smell the fragrance which is there. Like, uh, so that's what forest bathing is something which is coming into practice and that's what it's all about. Just just like whatever time you can, just go and spend it in nature yeah. and you feel the difference. Yeah, absolutely, totally agree. So what would be your plans for future to just... Uh... Be uh so plans for future yes as in i want to increasingly spend more time in nature and my <laughs> art so yes as in so that obsession is uh growing and will keep growing i think uh, otherwise yes as in i'm doing what i want to do so yeah i think it, it's only that i mean i increasingly want to spend more and more time into this so yes absolutely so that's great thank you so much richa and uh, if you have any questions for Richa, please type them in the uh, chat box down. We'll be able to take it up in the end of the session. We have Kriti uh, now. Uh -huh. Kriti, are you there? Yes, hi. Hi, Kriti. So uh, I'll just uh, tell you something about Kriti. So Kriti started a career in hospitality and worked with the Oberai group of hotels. After moving out from India in 2002, she turned into a bakery chef and entrepreneur. She then started her baking business and ran it successfully in Egypt, Russia, and Germany. In 2019, closed her business in Germany and moved to Dubai. She got into wildlife photography in 2021 as a hobbyist, and since then, has completely immersed herself in traveling to different parts of the world to photograph wildlife. Some of the highlights from her travels have been photographing the polar bears in the Arctic, 
beautiful avian diverse latin america which includes mexico costa rica and colombia palaces cat in ladakh himalayan brown bears in ras kargil snow leopards in spiti she is truly grateful to have found this passion which allows her not to only spend time in wild nature and capture the awe and untamed beauty it has to offer but also curate stories of the wild and present them on an urban platform through social media journaling she is pleased with her journey uh, here there too and very excited about what's to follow moving forward thank you yes. so much uh, kriti i am very I'm grateful to get you on the actually <laughs> yeah correct correct so a um, very basic question as i usually start since when have been you been interested in uh, wildlife and pursuing it so. so first of all thank you very much everyone for joining and uh, i was extremely inspired by richard's uh, presentation i thought it was amazing uh quite a lot of lessons to be learned there so thank you richard for a wonderful presentation uh about me um you know i was an army kid and i was a kid of the 70s so most of our time was spent outdoors uh we didn't have any gadgets we didn't have access to television so just mind you know mindlessly playing out and being in the nature was something which was um, which was way of life you know and i think very early on uh an interest in being in nature being outdoor got registered so i i i believe that you just don't wake up one day and you say i want to do this you know there is there has to be some sort of build up and for me it was in my very early nascent years um and uh, yeah and that's that's where i think uh, my interest got developed i remember waking up in the morning listening to birds i i obviously at that stage didn't know what birds they were what was what were the calls what you know nothing none of that but i just loved the chirp of the bird and i would look at the mountains and be in awe of them so i just absolutely loved nature so i think it is in the in those uh you know that stage of my life that uh, interest in nature and wildlife got registered so yeah that just that's 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 so wonderful and uh, so we can are you a self taught photographer and do you have a mentor in this field uh you know i consider myself fortunate and very fortunate so <laughs> fortunate because uh, i chanced upon a fabulous fabulous mentor right in the beginning of my journey his name is rahul sharma i eternally remain grateful to him for everything he taught me and i remember the first lesson i learned from him was the jungle will talk to you if you are ready to listen to it and i think that's where it all began for me and of course i learned a lot from him he mentored me taught me a lot of things about the camera about being in the wild how to conduct yourself uh different gears different options and so on so uh, yeah i ha- i'm very fortunate also because um you know i've had the opportunity to uh look up to many other photographers uh, for other things you know i believe when you are on a growth in a on a journey of growth uh it's not fair to lay all the expectations on one mentor to fulfill that journey of yours that that journey of growth so you you take inspire depending on how you're going which direction you're taking you do find different people who will mentor you and so on so for just for example i abs- i i haven't met him personally but uh, i think sudhir shivaram for example is a big mentor for me i've looked at all his tutorials and the way he explains i think as a teacher he is so giving you know yes and uh, so very silently he hasn't met me and i hope one day i get to meet him but i really admire how he has uh, you know um, uh, done that whole program of tutorials and and videos and showing every thing i mean he is just brilliant so i i lo- i just uh, admire him as a mentor and not just him but also so many other photographers and yeah. you know what um, for me also mentoring has come from the guides and the drivers right. on some right right the way they mentor you the way they teach you about animal 
uh, and I remember one of my drivers, bless him, very sweet. He told me, he says, ma'am, you want to take good pictures? Leave your camera and observe the animals and observe wow. their behavior. And I think that's another lesson, you know. So I think like I'm very fortunate that I've had great start and then the uh, going is good with so many people to learn from. Right, so yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's a very valid point. I often tell people also that there's a lot to learn from the people who are actually on the field, you know, they work in Absolutely. the forest, the guards, the, like you said, gypsy drivers, the guides, you know, or even for that matter, the gate guy standing there, because he also has some yeah. kind of experience, you know, he's standing there. So for from, you know, the small things, you know, they keep on telling you and small experiences, but you got some learnings from them always so this is what absolutely. i said I, yeah absolutely <laughs> totally agree. so uh can you share a few of your first experiences and photographs yes of, uh, absolutely yeah. uh let me bring that to you um one moment. but i'm just trying to sorry perils of technology <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely fine enter full screen yeah yeah so yeah. i just yeah. like to take you briefly through my journey uh like uh, like uh, himangi said um i think if i were to summarize my journey of wildlife photography it would be one of love loss and everything that i gained in between and allow me to explain that i think you have done it briefly but uh, i just elaborate on that so that's who i was uh, i uh, you know i started my career like you said with the obroy hotels and then i became a chef and I ran my business in different countries and I always had this um, love for food. So that's where the love came. And uh, and thereafter, you know, uh, we moved, we, we clo I closed my business in Germany and I moved to, um, to Dubai. And uh, this was just pre-COVID. And I was thinking, what am I going to do with, with myself? Am I going to open the business? Am I going to not open it? What am I going to do? And in the interim period, I reinvented myself as a yoga teacher. So I started, uh, I went on a, on a course and I trained myself as a yoga teacher and I started uh, doing classes and just then COVID hit. So, um, you know, um, it wasn't a good time for me per se because uh, obviously, and either for food business or for yoga business, both these businesses were health related. So there was no question of, you know, teaching and and I think Zoom ha Zoom sessions hadn't really come into play at that point in time. I was still trying to figure out and so on and so forth. And uh, truth be told, I went into a very deep depression because at that stage I lost my identity. Uh, I was an empty nester. My daughter had left for boarding school and subsequently to university. And um, you know, my husband's a, is a is a corporate guy, so obviously he travels a lot. Uh, leaving me very purposeless and uh, very lonely, actually. And also, um, you know, I felt like being a yoga teacher and a, and a baker was my identity. And now I didn't know how what to identify with. So it's in that backdrop that uh, I dropped everything and I said, I'm going to go to Rishikesh. Now thinking that there'll be some magic potion there, which I will consume and everything will be fine and I'll find my meaning and purpose. Yeah. But uh, actually, that didn't happen for many days until one point, which is which I call the point of no return, mm -hmm. is I was sitting in on my patio, and um, and then just feeling very low and thinking, okay, when will things change? And nothing was changing, and uh, there was a little bird, and let me bring you that bird, a sunbird, and it came okay. and planted itself right in front of me. It's been over two and a half years, I don't know what depression feels like anymore. Wow. This bird okay. changed everything for me. You know, I looked at this bird. I didn't know at that point what it was called. All I saw was this red plumage. Uh, and, you know, I was so taken. I was so consumed. I was so present in that moment. I just wanted to know everything about this bird. I was like, what is this bird? What is this <laughs> creature even? And I just... I took so I had a point and shoot camera and I just took that and that's the that's the picture I took uh, with that camera and I went hunting for this bird everywhere throughout the hotel where I was staying 
and uh, and that's it and i think that's where my beginning was and i wanted to learn about birds and i wanted to see birds and i wanted to know more, more about birds and then started my journey into wow. exploration into that yeah wow. so that's this what i would say incredible. yeah so just a right. just a, a word uh, here i mean when i was speaking with kriti over the calls last few days she was very persistent that she uh, speaks up about the times low times she faced because um, a it is very important to know that everyone goes through this but what your liking or passion can do for yourself you know is something that we have to learn today from kriti i think she's done i mean she found it and she got out of it that is more important uh, because you know that there are several other incidences that keep on happening in and around us but that is a way you know you have to find your own being or inner self or whatever you call it through the things that you like so uh, she was Absolutely. very very bold enough to you know tell, i mean she came up and said i want to make this point and tell everyone that i was going through this but now i'm not and thanks to wildlife for her at least absolutely and exactly what richa said you know previously i resonated with uh, with it 100% that nature heals so yeah, it's actually absolutely. my depression went away when i was when i started spending time in nature wow. because when you are in nature is when you realize that you know you are nothing absolutely. there is so much you are so inconsequential in this yeah. large spectrum of universe right. um you just forget about yourself you're not important enough you know and right. you just just kind of just want to be in that zone where right. you're so messy so inspired so i think i i totally 100% agree with her nature heals you know and yeah. that's been my uh, take away talking yeah. of my early experience now i have to say i have been in this for 2 years exactly 2 years now 2021 november is the first trip that i went for i've had like an accelerated uh <laughs> time in this field or rather an accelerated start into this field so within first 6 8 months of being in wildlife photography i saw this <laughs> palasis cat oh fact, this is one that i just saw last year and i was like mesmerized i didn't know people used to tell me i mean i went to ladakh sorry to intrude but this was something no, that, no, uh, so this i went to ladakh and people are saying look you won't get to see it you know last july and i was like no normally dikh raha you know i was used to seeing tigers for such a long time <laughs> that i forgot that this is some very thing something very elusive for that matter so i just went gaga over it i mean it was there and it was so wonderful yeah please go ahead absolutely and you know what i think like i wasn't uh, i mean pardon my ignorance but at that stage i was like what palasis cat what is yes, i didn't yeah. know i was really prepared to see them and yeah. they were there and then at that point in time i was like okay so this is like any cat you know because i wasn't yeah, yeah. i wasn't wired into wildlife long enough to appreciate right. what was in front of me of course later on in retrospect when i read about it when i studied it i was like oh my god like okay. you know this was like a lottery and two of right. them and they were picking and you know of course some of these pictures you will see um I, at that point there was a challenge of the gear for example i was too new in it i didn't have the gears i have now or whatever but you know those moment become very special for you when you have sight in something so so palasis mm-hmm. cat himalayan brown bears i think this was wow this, this is the usual this was spectacular yeah. this was in um, dras and kargil so okay. um it's a very very interesting scape and i just want to say a couple of words here so it's very tough to photograph yeah. them yeah because yeah. you know their dens are right up on the mountain and you're talking about 11800 to 12000 feet you know and you got to start at the base of the mountain not not base of like whatever but base of that particular hill where they are and you got to have a head start so for example every morning we would start walking at 4 am in dark with okay. those headlamps and our whole gears we don't know where we were going and you start climbing the mountain and these bears when the sunlight hits they slowly start to come up okay. and you want to want to have a head start and you want to get as ahead as possible so that you can have a head on shot 
in right. decent light because light is okay. so low if, right. if you for example caught them at six o'clock somewhere it would be terrible lighting so you want right. to catch them at 6 30 6 45 yeah. so the the further you can go the better so this was a right. very tough experience and um, you know uh, we went for four consecutive days and right. it's the fourth day that i got it this close so oh. it was tough at a physical level but also emotional level and uh, yeah, but it was all worth it. So, lovely, lovely. Yeah. Malian Monal, uh, another bird oh. that I was in our wildlife sanctuary. I don't have a decent. Uh, so this is this particular shot was taken in Bhutan actually, and this is when I was looking for tragopans and I was looking for blood pheasants, and suddenly this Monal came and you know planted itself. I wasn't even looking, but we went to wildlife. Uh, we went to Kedarnath Wildlife Sanctuary to yeah. choke on them. Um, Monal male and then the female which we found also wow. in Chukta was uh, which was quite unique and different I mean these are the birds that you find you know much yes ahead. yes uh, Kokolas so um, Kokolas, you know Kokolas also in uh, Kedarnath Wildlife Sanctuary and uh, you know I, I have to say one thing which I actually saved it up for later but as women we have this imposter syndrome like we are not good enough we don't know uh, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of external sound which is there you know where which makes yeah, you believe yeah. that oh you, you how can you know you're too early into this so right. we were driving and i was with some stellar photographers in the car <laughs> and this is still my days when i did group travels and we'll discuss yeah. that later yeah and we were driving and i spotted and i was sitting on the right side and i spotted it right there and i said back the car so they were like, no, no, kuch nahi yoga, madam, aise hi hai, aise hi hai. I said, no, back the car. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I was like, and you know, and that moment and when, when we back the car, it was just right then. Look at the way it's sitting, no clutter, nothing wow. clear. Yeah. Uh, exactly. You just suddenly got a confidence boost. Ki main bhi kar sakti hu, main bhi dek yeah. sakti hu. Even, you know, and these moments are so precious, yes. you know, yeah. without turning you into arrogance, they just make you believe in yourself. And right. I think this was... This was one of those moments I will never forget. So right. I'm wonderful. Saying, you know, I have a better picture with better <laughs> gears. But I'm just happy with the story and what it instilled into me. And absolutely. Uh, so here I would like to share something. I'd gone to Chokta last year, and uh, I have. I was in a group. Uh, we have about ten of us, for, for that matter, and two in Ova or three in Ova. And uh, we started climbing. There was black ice because i went in the month of march and uh, when we started the climb that absolutely the ice was you know i thought it's very very easy climb you know go with that you know that my feet will no yeah, but the feet was, it was very slippery and at some one point of time we had the age group from 60 to down 23 the photographers and people who were plus 50 just uh, said we are not coming because uh, if they slip and all then there's an issue i mean I mean, they did not want to take the risk. And I Absolutely. was somewhere in between because I did not have experience. Neither I was, you know, way too old to cling. Are, bap, re, mein gir gai, to what, what will happen? And the younger breed just went off Cooper. So at that point, I had a mind this thing to take a call whether I should be going up to see the Monal and to photograph or I should just get down with these people and go to the Innova back. So at that point, mm -hmm. I said, forget it. I won't get a chance like this. I will go slowly, but I will climb all the way. So I was, a, I mean, between four of us, I was the last person to reach there. But I was thankful because that bird was so beautiful that I simply forgot. I was sitting there and just looking. I put my camera aside. I said, Ye to, you know, this is something that I have to, you know, re you know cherish these kind of, you know, memories. So these are the kind of stories that we are we always remember yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> yeah please sir. uh saris crane <laughs> so yes. this is now in uh bharatpur yeah. and again i had no idea what they would look like what happened and then suddenly they appeared and you know the whole family and they were uh they were calling in the call and of course in that moment i fumbled with my camera and i did some i don't know what i did i didn't get uh <laughs> nice videos which would have been amazing but anyhow i'm happy with what i got yeah. and i thought uh, wonderful unique to see family together yeah yeah and of course 
went to Kenya oh. and uh, this was very precious because we were looking for um, we were actually not even looking for cubs and uh, fortunately for us we were staying at a conservancy in uh, Kenya we were staying at uh, Olare Motorogi and um, that year not too many cubs were sighted and uh, we were looking for lions and we were looking for lionesses and then suddenly we got a call saying uh, you know five cubs on their own without the pride because once they are with the pride then it's very difficult to get them it's like a studio shot it's like they're just sitting right. there to be so right. I thought yeah. it was a beautiful moment and I'm just so uh, grateful that I got to capture them um, and with the mother and the aunts and you know the whole pride so yeah yeah lovely uh, so this was a nice moment early on very early on in my photography journey and all of them looking at you huh? there was not a single yeah, one looking exactly, the other yeah. there so yeah. they all looking. absolutely it's just it's just that moment you know everyone is like looking at you yeah. uh, then of course you get some classic shots from kenya you know how it is wow. so wow. Yeah. yeah and oh. um yeah this was this was my favorite actually because you don't know what he he's he looks very ecstatic uh, at the same time, he's in pain because he wa he had had a fight. So he had a lot of bruises and cuts, oh. and, uh, you know, uh, wounds. Okay, okay. And of course, then he was calling. He was calling yeah. his pride, I think. Pride, yeah. I just, I just found this picture to be very interesting uh, and I loved yeah. it. Um, then, of course, we went to Leva Downs and I got an opportunity to get a nice silhouette shot of this uh, rhinoceros, which was great. Um leopards oh. on the tree. Oh. <laughs> that's again mm. another classic shot with, which every new photographer gets I mean the old ones will be like okay whatever move on <laughs> <laughs> but you know how it is it's like a, okay. yeah, and no leopards so oh. this was another beautiful yeah this was another again happened very very early on in my uh, journey into photography um, and this was really again a very unique we were of course very far but this trip was very very challenging in every way you are looking at about between minus 15 to minus 20 degrees you are out okay. for six to eight hours every day looking for them there are climbs to be done at fourteen thousand feet um you know and then but when you spot them you feel nothing feel it's nothing. like yeah. you at some point you need to remove your gloves to click and uh, it's freezing and you, but you just don't feel that pain. You just keep clicking. And we were very fortunate. We saw uh, cubs and then we saw mother and cubs. Uh, so that was nice. And I really hope at some point I can go back with my big guns. <laughs> uh, <laughs> get some, you know, nicer shots right. and close up. And yeah, let's see when that will happen. But for now, yeah. I'm pretty chuffed with what I've got. <laughs> uh, other, oh. other wildlife uh, in that area. So yeah, now I want to talk about this one thing which has been like my transitioning moment. So I totally believe up to this point, I was a camera owner, not a photographer. And um, I, I want to give you a little bit of a background very quickly, uh, yeah. which was really that transitioning moment for me. Is uh, we, I was in Taroba. This was my first solo trip. Thank God I went alone <laughs> on this trip and this <laughs> Flavor of what uh, what that uh, solo trip can mean, okay. and I really haven't gone back after. But anyway, so uh, we were in. I was in Taroba, and I did about ten safaris, and I was really happy, feeling very content and happy with whatever we'd seen and whatever. Last day, hour and a half left, uh, and we have to exit. And I was just enjoying and my guide said, Madam, I wish you would get the tiger. So I said, Koi baat nahi. let's enjoy the forest. It's beautiful. It was very quiet. Yeah. And uh, we said, let's, let's drive by the lake and go back. So we were driving by the lake and going back. And suddenly in a little alley, I see a huge canter standing. Mm. And everybody's hands were out with a mobile phone. <laughs> and there were no cars inside, right? Now, one thing I figured out that the kind of stuff canter guys get. <laughs> you will I was you just going to tell you this that I think I we should tell have you more I, canters I, I, than, than the next gypsy. time I was go in a canter man. I mean, see this. So yeah. All these guys are like, hands are out and they are bloody sorry busy clicking. <laughs> yeah. So, and then you know I'm like 
वहां चलते हैं लेट्स गो नहीं नहीं मैडम लंगूर देख रहे होंगे दे मस्ट बी वाचिंग लंगूर्स और दे मस्ट बी यू नो सम डियर हियर देयर फॉरगेट इट मैम कुछ नहीं होगा आई सेड नो जस्ट गो ही सेज कोई कॉल नो कॉल इज कमिंग अदरवाइज इफ देयर वाज अ मूवमेंट सम कॉल वुड कम इट वाज इट वाज पिन ड्रॉप्ड साइलेंस इट वाज जस्ट प्ले ऑफ इंस्टिंक्ट एंड इंट्यूशन आई सेड आई डोंट केयर लेट्स गो चेक इट आउट ही सेज नाउ वी कांट गो बिकॉज़ uh you know there are lots of bushes there i said just drive please i'm just begging you just go <laughs> so let's go are you sure you're okay i said yeah i'll find i'll duck these bushes yeah. were there yeah. we drive we drive in that direction we get past that and um this is what i get maya oh. uh she is an emotion as you all know and uh i don't know i mean she i get very emotional even now when i yes. look at this picture yes yes she she is very very close to my heart and i really relate with her and she gave me this moment wow. you know which uh, where she just picked up her cup and and by the way she was missing for four months and this was the first day she came out with a cup in her mouth Ooh, okay so it was like okay. that simba moment you know where yes. he introduces <laughs> the, so uh, happened and uh, and i i think i'm not sure but i think i happened to be the only photographer with a decent camera even then i had a small one but i i yeah. took this picture and Wonderful. then uh, and then two things happened one i got my stripes so after finish oh. finish this yeah after i finished shooting this picture the guy looked at me says madam what happened to your face so all those thorns just went from my face giving me wow. these stripes Oh but God. i tell you i my these i feel like this is something which is like a badge of honor and i wear it very very oh. <laughs> on, on my face and i love it and i think maya gave me this souvenir on my face which i Wonderful. absolutely wear with yeah and yeah. um and then the second thing that happened was the newspaper they uh, they approached wow. and i was so new at this um yeah. you know and uh, I could never even hope that I'll go in a Times of India, and uh, you know, it just went. And wonderful, it just, wonderful. Very happy, you know, that uh, there was such a nice story associated, and it is in this moment that I truly felt like, okay, now I have shifted. Right. Something has shifted. You know? Right. So yeah, right, so right. this is, this is amazing. Nice. So, um, I would just like to at this stage, I would like to ask you. So, where is your heart in photography so do you like birds mammals or so what do you like photographing where is your the um, true heart so you know i have to be honest with you um my heart really is um in birds <laughs> i'm a birder at heart uh, and yeah. i think this has something to do with uh, the beginnings of my journey which is yeah. the sun itself right. um and then of course uh, you know after that i went to satal which is like a biome which attracts such beautiful there's a beautiful avian diversity there yeah, it attracts yeah. a lot of migratory birds and they are beautiful yeah. and stunning uh, i'm still learning i'm still you know figuring it out who, you know about them but uh, i i just love looking at them and photographing them and studying them so yeah i would say i'm i'm a birder at heart and i would i can show you some of my work of yeah. course it's on in Ma'am, I don't know how we are doing time-wise, but I can just yeah, you can the... definitely you can see them. So wow. that's from Satal, um, yeah. and um, yeah, some of the birds from Satal, um, Miltava, Rufus Bellied, very ditter flycatcher. This is a classic the, shot. Um, this thing, yeah, the it's Amage. it's wonderful, yeah, image. The this thing is coming very nice. Image is image is beautiful, yeah, and yeah. Uh, so you. Yeah. This is a very classic one where you have the, um, then the 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 wow. infamous DKF, of course. <laughs> yeah, and I went to um to uh, Pune, out outskirts of. Okay. okay. And uh, then this is from Mexico. It's a vermilion uh, flycatcher, very very okay. beautiful. Wow. And uh, I took that in Mexico, vernal hanging parrots. Vernal hanging, yes. Uh, Sheller Farms. Big shout yeah. out to him. Really, really. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you can get some fabulous shot. This is in my backyard. So I, you know, I have a home in Himachal, 
Yeah. I have a little home in Archer and I go there every now and then and, uh, and camera is now an extension of my arms. I go with a camera everywhere and this uh, this was on a birding trip actually which I uh, I found uh, yeah uh, in uh, yeah the Himalayan blue tail male. Ah uh, this is oh. very beautiful. This is from Costa Rica king vultures. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, yeah. the avian diversity, they have some thousand odd species, not just of birds, but also reptiles and yeah. so on. So a, a great place for birders. Okay, so I have to tell you about this picture. Now, I have better pictures of uh, the keel built to Khan. But yeah. one thing I would like to say is that, you know, um, this picture got a lot of criticism when I put it up. Because people mm. said, oh, it's exposed, the details are not great, what is this blue tinge to it, and da-da-da-da, la-la-la-la-la. But I just cut all that noise, because I loved it. At that stage, yeah. this is I, how I could appreciate. And guess what? In January 2023, I had about some 800 followers on my Instagram. This picture took it to 44,400. So Ooh. never say yes with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just do imagine. what your heart believes. There are no rules. There is no rule yeah. book. What yeah. appeals to you, what appeals to your sensibility at whichever stage you are at that point. If you ask me today, will I post it? No, maybe I'll look at look at a better picture and compose it better or whatever. But at that stage, that part of my uh, journey within, this appealed to me and this this was right. fine. And I posted what I got. <laughs> so, Wonderful. yeah. So this um collared arakari right uh hummingbirds of course again costa rica uh this was another beautiful one which was the scarlet belly tanager which i found in colombia um okay. also great avian diversity um wow. in my backyard in himachal <laughs> lovely so oh. another mountain from colombia so yeah, and I was trying flying shots. So it's only once you've got your safe shots is when you start to try and experiment. Try, yeah. And talking of mentor, I really, really respect. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, the the person who mentored me on this trip, he's an amazing photo tour guide. His name is Daniel in Colombia. And he just doesn't do Colombia, but also Costa Rica, Patagonia, and so on and so forth. And he told me how to take flying shots in a very clear way. Oh. So he taught me the TV mode and the manual yeah. mode, which I was always shooting in AV. <laughs> I mean, it, but it just worked for me. And I got a, yeah. got a good shot that I was personally very happy with. So yeah, so you know, mentors everywhere. Right, right. Uh, wow. hanging pen. Uh, another you know another lot of lot of noise oh there's too much in the background this that and the other but I loved it again you know <laughs> it's just what you like and this was a very interesting fruit bat and uh, something new that I learned which is night photography flash photography right. Right. Uh, also in Costa Rica uh, oh yeah multicolor tanager wow. um, most sought after bird in Colombia again uh, you know just came for a flash of a moment but Thanks to Daniel and the technique he taught me how to capture it. I could get a very sharp picture because it's so skittish. It just won't stay yeah. in one place. It'll just keep going. So yeah, yeah. happy with what I got. Um, another beautiful one, bay-headed tanager um, from Colombia. Really a stunning bird. So yeah, they are some of my favorite crimson drum tukan, tukanet rather. Um, extremely endearing <laughs> bird. Lovely. Costa Rica and uh, yeah so wood start another one from Colombia uh, broadbill hummingbird from Mexico wow. uh, a habit nice habitat shot mm -hmm. of a beautiful summer tanager which I got in Costa Rica so yeah mm. uh, red legged um, honey creeper also very, very beautiful bird the plumage was good so and yeah and the snowy owl this oh, was on my recent trip to Canada and uh, this was another one of those moments where you kind of instill a little bit confidence in yourself um, it was just sitting there it was dark and uh, you know I spotted it and then we waited and it also patiently waited till the sun came up and we could I could get this nice uh, shot this nice. Uh, there's just some of them that uh... yeah wow <laughs>
lovely this was some uh, it's like a bouquet of you know flowers being offered to us this all beautiful and all nice <laughs> so this lovely this thing so um now i'll come to a way i mean a lot of people uh, someone has asked for your gear what gear you use but we'll come to that so do you travel solo and what are the some of the challenges that you face okay so i really relate to tigress because she is alpha female and so am i <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, see, I'm not a lioness. I'm a tigress. <laughs> yeah. So, correct, correct. so you know, I, I mean, it is what it is. Um, yeah. you know, I, I, I don't find any challenges in solo traveling. In fact, on the contrary, it gives me a lot of, um, silence and space to do what I want to do. And exactly what Richa was saying, you know, I was listening to her talk about uh, how sometimes she, when she goes in a group and she needs to sketch or whatever, there are other people yeah, who are saying okay. like, oh, chop, chop, let's go. So it's the same with me. You know, I feel like uh, when I am on a solo safari or a solo trip, I can do what I want, you know, and wherever I want to put, put my focus. Now, you know, I'm a birder and I have a yes. special affinity for Kingfisher. Now, once I actually let go of a tiger sighting for a kingfisher. Now, imagine if I was in a group of, with a group of, they would actually feed me to that tiger. Yes. Can you correct, even correct, imagine? Correct. Like, and that yeah. to a common kingfisher. Where, yeah. So I am like, you know, I just, I need to have my flexibility. I need to have my, uh, you know, space and silence or whatever. And I think, um, no, I have not had any any challenges whatsoever traveling solo because also I think I'm a nomad. I mean, I yeah. was an army kid. I traveled everywhere. Then with my husband, we moved to different countries and then I travel a lot. So I, I've never had an issue of traveling. But I have to say one of the things which is very important is safety. Uh, safety because budget is very important I mean depending on what budgets you have or you know if it suits you and also if you have like-minded people you don't mind going with them if you know mm -hmm. you'll get your space people will not you know uh, clutter you with their ideas and thoughts and so if you can cut the noise then I think it's it's also good to go in a group there is a merit in that as well but for me personally I think uh, solo works the best solo having works. said that there is a trip coming up very soon uh, where uh, three of us are going away uh, on okay. a trip. So yeah, I am going, but I think now I've also developed a little bit of a shield uh, to protect that, uh, yeah. my own uh, focus and what I want to achieve. Interest, so, yeah. Correct, correct. That's nice. Someone was asking, I would like to defer here and ask, which gear are you using? And uh, uh, So I'm a Canon user. Um, and okay. currently I have for birding I use uh, R5 Canon R5 okay. and 600 mm RF lens okay. Uh, okay. and uh, I have recently got a new baby which is 400 2.8 and I'm very okay. excited to take that safari which is coming okay. up in future for me so okay. yeah so those those are the two big ones then apart from that I also have a 7200 2.8 okay um, uh, so that I use for safari as well okay. and uh, then I uh, I do have because I, I'm also I mean I'm self I mean I, I do keep doing pictures of food, food and so on so for that I use uh, 50 mm okay. and then I have um, a 1735 uh, okay. for landscape and so okay. on so okay nice good uh, so can you talk about some of the unique destinations you have traveled to because we've yes. already covered a few in the photographs, but uh, you can just elaborate a few more. Well, you know, I have to say, um, Gir. Yes, Gir, yeah. I tell you, something about Gir. I just get a, a big smile on my face and I talk. I don't know what it is about Gir, what it is about Gujarat, what it is about that forest, which... It's so beautiful. The energy was stunning and I had the best time. So uh, for me, this was a very unique experience. I had done a lot of solo safaris before, but this experience was very unique. And I think Asiatic lions are beautiful. And especially the lionesses, I thought was stunning. Really, really okay. nice. I mean, people say a lot of things about, they always compare Kenyan Kenyan uh, lions and Indian lions. Did I say tiger? Mm -hmm. Sorry. I said tiger. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I mean, Indian lions and uh, 
Kenyan lion and all that. There's no comparison. Like they're just beautiful yeah. as they are. Right. And I just loved, I love going on a safari. Um, this was one of my favorite pictures. Uh, so this was a oh, little nice. bit of a story where uh, the lion came. He came from somewhere, and the lioness was the lioness was sitting with her cubs. And he rested. One of the cubs walked up to him. And this is all actually documented in different forms. Pictures, videos. At some point, I'll be putting it out. And and this is my, my make-believe story. I don't know what happened in their own understanding of things. But so he rested and one of the cubs came and he got, he growled, he, you know, whatever. He got scared. He went back to mother and mother kind of, uh, you know, calmed him down. And then she walked okay. up to him and slapped him. She actually slapped him. Okay. All right. And she went right back. Yeah. And then the cop came again. And this time the father was all lovey dovey. And you know, it was like <laughs> such a sweet moment. I really yeah. need to curate this into a nice little, you know, reel or something. I don't know. At some point I'll do it. But uh, yeah. so yeah, so Gir was very special. Of course, you know, Tiger Safari, this was Bandhavgar. This was a sub adult which was actually um stalking a deer and we were stalking okay. him. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Then of course polar bears. I mean, that expedition was phenomenal, phenomenal. And you know, we talk about global warming and we talk about all of this, and it came very, very, very close to home when you went there. Yeah. So you know, when I went there, you saw that there was a lot of chatter. Oh, where is global warming? There are fifty of these. I mean, in my in my first day, I sighted about fourteen, fourteen polar bears. Wow. Yeah, 14 polar bears, right, in Churchill, which is the last point or the, so we, we had a trip which went up to, uh, uh, to Churchill, and from Churchill, we took another bush plane to go deep into Arctic, so there were just four cabins, and it was just few of us, that's it, mm -hmm. so we were in the middle of absolutely nowhere, and wow. uh, because that's really deep in, and so what these polar bears are doing is they are waiting at the shore, waiting for the water to freeze, so that they can go back to their hunting ground and uh, hunt seals. But the water hasn't frozen. So they are still at the shores. And that's why yeah. you see so many of them. And that water hasn't frozen because clearly of global warming and so on, you know. So, um, but they were beautiful. And um, I just think like, uh, what a privilege it was to man. share space with them, you know. Yeah. Um, they are the apex predator. And in yeah. fact... The largest predator on this planet and as cute as they look they're extremely okay. formidable and uh, we ca i came very up close this was this this picture was full frame i think i shot with uh 7200 okay so Lovely. yeah so they come very close and uh yeah so yeah so this is uh this is the landscape that you see of arctic wow. uh, arctic absolutely flat land seamlessly large landscapes are stunning and then suddenly this beast appears and just you know wow. it was one of the most transforming trips for me if I may say yeah. so yeah so and also there was um, the tri-colored uh, fox or the melanistic wow. fox as they call mm. them. some arctic hair so there was the, these were some of the other uh, wildlife there, and yeah, so that sums up my journey of wildlife. Wonderful, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. So this is so incredible, both of you. I mean, I even Richa, for that matter, completely different. You know, I found her this thing, uh, and for you, you like you said, you've been a tigress. And I don't know how many trips have you done in two years. I mean. So <laughs> it's like yeah, I've been here, I've been here, I've been here. So how frequent were you really traveling? So, so I was just actually counting. I have done twenty seven trips out of Dubai in the last wow. two years. Wow, amazing! Yeah. I have to say it's also because I have a lot of support from my family. Yeah. My daughter and my husband are extremely supportive. They give me a lot of space to do what I want to do, and. Um, you know, I think that's very important. Um, yeah. I mean, if yeah. I had not had that, um, then it would just... Right. Yeah. Right. So, I'm so um, sorry, we'd all, all, you all already said, you know, about uh, a couple of things that you've been through and, you know, how this helped. But what message would you like to give women or 
women in wildlife or general women who are pursuing their pa passions. Uh, I mean, how do they take things to another different level or keep pursuing it? Because challenges at home or, you know, constraints of like our typical Indian households are there. So how do you overcome that or keep yourself motivated? Right. So, you know, there is there are two, three things that I want to say. One is um, it is very important, important as women to first really find out. And it's just not wildlife. It can be anything, any right. hobby or interest that you have. What is it that completely consumes you? Where mm -hmm. you are not thinking, it's meditation in the end. Absolutely. You know, when, yes. I'm, when I'm in the wild, I don't think of anything else. There's nothing mm -hmm. on my mind except right. how to get the pictures of this particular subject, you know, right. or how to be in the nature and how to listen to it. So I'm very tuned. So I think it's very important to find out what is it that consumes you. Right. Which, um, which keeps you up at night and dreaming during the day, you know, literally. Right. And I think, I think for me, it's, it's been like this with food, yoga and um, wildlife photography. And I have to say wildlife photo photography right now is top of that chart. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so this is, this is number one, to find out what your passion is. Um, second is to find out the right resource. And there are plenty of, let me tell you, and you don't have to spend tons of money to get a private mentor, one-on-one -on -one training. There's so much stuff out there, you know, which yeah. you can... So many, so much inspiration, which is there. And that brings me to the second point, which is uh, cutting the noise. You know, I mm. spoke about it briefly. So there are two noises. One is external noise and one is internal noise. And let me tell you, oh. internal noise is far harsher and difficult to overcome. Right. Right. You can still, you know, zone out. So external noise can also come from a lot of uh, naysayers. Mm. Are, what does she know? She has all the time under the planet. Uh, are, she has a, a very rich husband or yeah. are, uh, her pictures are good she has good gears and worst of all she has good luck <laughs> so you know yeah. you somehow denoise you know what I mean by yeah, <laughs> you yeah, travel, bingo you, you yeah. really have to cut that noise out you yeah. know, uh, and not let that affect you number one yeah Number two is the noise which is coming from within, which is we as women always like to second guess our choices, ourselves. Right, right. This syndrome. Oh shit, I'll be found out. You know, somebody mm -hmm. will know that I'm not good enough. Like, you mm -hmm. know, that also believing in whatever you're putting out there. It but and you know, it can be in different stage of your journey. Obviously, yeah. when I look at my pictures, and by the way, I've not deleted one single picture from my past. I want that journey because that journey at that point at that point that photograph was very important to important, me important yeah correct very important to me so never ever second guess yourself and you know what the most important thing to register is there is no rule there is yeah. no rule who said the rule who said yeah. the compass okay if you have a certain target then it's fine but if you're a hobbyist what rules yeah. are there and yeah. what and if the composition was not great and what the I love it. You know, I was yeah. out in the nature. We mm. made an effort. I went out there. So find your own rules. Find your own game. Okay. And uh, so I think, I think that journey, finding your own journey is, and, and I'm al always, I always believe journey is more important than destination. One day you will get a sharp shot. One day you will get a good shot. One day you will yeah. get a head-on shot. It will come. If you keep pursuing, it will come. You know, yeah. so yeah. literally just go out there and just yeah. do what you love doing. Success, good photographs, they are all incidental. It will come with experience. Right. But just right. keep yourself and go out there and right. do what you love doing, something that consumes you. The second thing I want to say is creativity. Right. Now, I, creativity without strategy is art. So what are you after? And creativity with strategy is marketing. So it also mm -hmm. depends on what you are after. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. if you are in the second category then you will you will you will sort of make informed decision based on your target uh, to achieve that but if you're mm. from the first category which is me uh, then it's very important to zoom in and zoom out zoom in for inspiration from other artists and photographers and zoom out to do your own thing because you also don't want to clone you know you don't want to clone right. somebody 
want to have your own signature style and that's very important people may yeah. not like it it may not fit the the curriculum but you know what you have done it you loved it you enjoyed yeah. it so that is that is the message which is very important uh, that validation from within you know yeah absolutely uh, absolutely good point i think a huge take away from this seriously i mean i'm not just saying for the sake of it but we all want to listen and someone who's you know gone through that road traveled so from someone it makes more sense than you know uh, just a kind of a, a gyan.com which we say but yeah. you <laughs> you've really traveled that path and you've come here and you say so for me it's very um, it was nice to hear that the picture that you put up because you found it nice because you're not a part of any competition so for me people tell ki you work very less on your photos i do i keep, i like to keep them natural so first i has to get deterred by all this you know ki kahe i don't know how to work on photos but now i think i somewhat i make them presentable but that's how my style is i put, like to put them in a much natural way than painting them I don't, I don't, <laughs> yeah so I don't good good i get that all the time your edits are completely like crap yeah. you know? <laughs> same here same here yeah. what is this edit? you know what it is it is what it is it's a journey yeah, i will learn journey. yeah five, correct i'm just few years in this journey after 15 years let's talk when i'm 15 years old in this right right <laughs> correct yes absolutely you're absolutely so that's that's it i think we come in the end of our amazing webinar it was great uh, i think richa are you if you can just turn on your one minute yes yeah <laughs> so we had two brilliant ladies on our platform i'm so very happy that you agreed to come on it this is a huge awareness thing this should this is available on youtube let me uh, say this to everyone please spread it ahead i want more and more people to view it experience it and know about these ladies thank you so much and uh, please visit their instagram what i think richa kedia is the instagram page richa and dot kedia uh, yeah richa dot kedia and uh, kriti valia photography if uh, this thing so please visit their like them follow them and follow their journeys ahead and richa we please come down sometime to pune and you can have a workshop here i i would <laughs> love to invite you <laughs> so sure down. definitely yeah <laughs> thank you so much uh, from jungle bells hope to keep in touch with you ahead yeah. too Thank, thank you so much for having me. Oh and thank yes. you for participating. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.